How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake. And I'm Chris. And if you guys haven't been following along, we've been going through what I've been calling in my head the conveyor saga. Yeah. We, a couple months ago, were strongly encouraged that we needed a conveyor. Yes. We were told that we should go out and buy an old hay elevator. Seems simple enough. You could use that. Well, you can't really just use like a 60 year old hay elevator for firewood right off the bat. We've gone through. But you can if it is pre fit to do firewood. Right. So we found that we, one on. We, we found one Facebook. that had been used for firewood. Yep. Not with our splitter. We needed some modifications, but it, it, it worked. We saw the potential in the conveyor. So then, the YouTube community, as great as you guys all are, have been giving us many, many, many suggestions on how we could improve it and fix it and make it work better. And I, we've taken a lot of those suggestions. We've also not listened to some of those ideas um, because they were stupid. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but this idea, somebody did come up with. And yesterday we were splitting. We didn't film it. We were doing a little mental health day. Just, just enjoying the splitting and the and the, the fumes of exhaust and chainsaws and wood dust and it got Chris's allergies going. <laughs> um, we filled the whole trailer with beautiful boneless, skinless ash, and then the conveyor broke. But it broke at a good time because we were done splitting and filling the trailer. However, it has prompted us to kickstart this project of fixing the conveyor. Hopefully the whole chain breaking issue. Yeah. And what we're gonna do here is we got a bunch of new angle iron, as well as some that are already pre-cut and left over from the last thing. And we got rivets. Went out to Harbor Freight, got some rivets, got a new rivet gun. And our plan is to drill out all the paddles. We're gonna make a jig out of some two by four here and use the drill press over there in the corner. And we're gonna rivet these things on as opposed to welding them because what we were told and you know the conclusion that we've come to is that the heating up of the metal, welding it on like so, this one here was welded on, and you can see where it broke. I don't know if these things are cast or what, um, but I think the heating up just fatigues the metal too much, and eventually they break, um, the new and the old links. So we also have buckets of right links and left links. So we're gonna hopefully do this right, and do it once and for all and replace them all and today is the beginning of this saga. So what's the plan here? What's the first thing we're doing? Uh, first thing, we gotta make a couple measurements, make a couple cuts on the two by four, make a jig, and uh, then we can start drilling. See if we can make one bar fit properly on the conveyor before we take over the entire chain. Right. Once we run that through a few times, should be good to go and then we can replace everything if we're seeing that we're breaking a rivet too quick, you know, we have to adjust our measurements and go from there. Yeah. So um, for now, all of these paddles that are currently on the conveyor are cut to 16 inches, and all of these mounting tabs were welded at the top sprocket, and they are all pretty, you know, close. The, those center of those holes are at about 15 inches, 15 and a half inches, I'm sorry, on center. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to make a jig and try out one test one. Okay guys, so we got the new bar drilled out, holes on each side, got the rivet gun and the rivets. We just broke the chain at the appropriate links. We spliced in two brand new links, left and right. So this one is gonna be our test, so to speak. So we're going to try it out. 
Yeah? Yeah. That's it. You're so strong. There you go. Pop rivet in. That was easier. That was the first rivet I've ever put in, believe it or not. What guess, do you think? Uh, that was a lot easier than welding it. We'll see if it holds. But I am a little disappointed. Why isn't that thing go Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Shaking the piggy bank. Okay, so here is my first two rivets. I feel like uh, that could be a good like child's book, like my first, you know, toy car, but my <laughs> first, first my first rivets. two pop rivets. Um, but here, show, I think it's gonna be good because it gives the chain some room to move. Now, obviously it's not, you know, gonna move that much on the sprockets, but these sprockets are kind of janky and I think this will offer a little bit more flexibility. Now, granted these are aluminum, rivets um they didn't have any steel rivets um, but i'm thinking that if these work we can always upgrade to some steel rivets that'll be a little bit more durable and heavy duty but for testing purposes right now i think these will do the trick so we'll what put the put chain, chain back, back together, together and together test and it see if it goes all right <laughs> Whatever. If it's holding, leave it. It's holding. It should be good. <laughs> now, can clamp this to the drill press <clears throat> at 15 and a half inches on center, correct? Well, we only, really only need the drill on the one point a quarter here. Inch. Quarter yeah, inch. Quarter inch in. Be good, right? Boom, and then <laughs> take it out, flip it, and we're on our same mark. Did you look at that?
You're an a-hole. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Two holes. Looks a lot like the one we made before. It does, which is surprising. But I guess that really shouldn't be surprising, but I'm surprised. So two down, 14 to go. Okay guys, we are back a couple days later and the end of the last day I spent cutting the rest, or the rest of drilling out, I guess, not even cutting, just drilling out the rest of the pieces of angle iron paddles that I had already had cut. Um, so there are five here, plus the one that's on the conveyor is six. There are 14 paddles total. So now we need to come over here to where I have some more angle iron see it land out on the floor there we're gonna mark it out to 16 and cut it um, that first test one that we did was one of these aluminum rivets a quarter inch diameter rivet um, worked pretty well however I was thinking that steel is stronger than aluminum so I went on to McMaster car um, I'll put a link to this website down in the description if you've never been to McMaster car and you're looking for any sort of like fastener or I actually got the gear for the uh, hand crank on the conveyor this website has a bunch of really cool stuff and what I got from them were steel quarter inch rivets. Um, so these things will probably be a little tougher to install as opposed to the aluminum ones, but with this rivet gun, hopefully we can get it done and uh, you know, do it once, do it right kind of thing. So I'm gonna mark up this angle iron every 16 inches and we're gonna get it cut. Okay guys, here are the 16, well actually 15, 16 if you include the one out on the conveyor that we tested, but here they all are, all drilled out, nice and even, so um, all these should hopefully, relatively easily, go onto the conveyor. Um, what I have not done is test fit these rivets to paddle itself. So I'm going to pull a rivet out and just make sure that it the quarter inch diameter rivet fits in the quarter inch holes that I just drilled. Okay, moment of truth. Rivet hole uh, I don't know. It's a little tight on that hole. That it's not the fit I was hoping for. You say hole size diameter 0.257 to 0.261. So last time I checked, that's the right size. And look at the bits I have a uh, quarter inch bits so not quite sure what's going on there these aluminum ones let's try these even the aluminum ones are a little Tight too, but I was able to get it in. Might just have to bore these out a little bit more. Okay, so I mean, I hear on the package it says whole size diameter 0.257 to 0.261. Now, I mean, I was under the impression that 0.25 would be quarter inch. I don't know if that 0.007 
of an inch is the factor at hand here that is preventing these rivets from fitting in. Um, but all of the rivets that I saw in this quarter inch range said that they fit holes 0.257 to 0.261, um, leading me to believe that that would be quarter inch. So um, I'm not sure. I might have to take a file to these and bore it out a little bit. I'm going to figure it out. Okay, guys, so it was probably a pretty quick time lapse, but I just reamed out all of the paddles, both holes, just with the hand drill here, and I guess that did the trick. I mean, now the rivets all go in nice and easy um, to all of the paddles. So I don't know if that drill bit that I got at Harbor Freight, I mean, I know that they were cheap, but it honestly looks like some of the holes were like a little misshapen. So I wonder if that had something to do with just like the jig or whatever. But um, now the rivets all go into the holes, so we should have no problem. All right, guys, Chris just got here. We have made it out to the conveyor. Here is that first test paddle that we did with the aluminum rivets. I'm, I'm saying that we just leave that one on there just to see. I'm curious to see how the aluminum rivets hold up yeah, compared to, I mean, it's just one paddle. Right. We'll do the rest with the steel ones. We got everything out here, including Coors. We are unofficially sponsored by Coors Banquet, the Golden Bullet, brewed with 100% Rocky Mountain water since 1873. Um, we have the rivet gun out here. We have all of the chain links, both right and left. We have the steel rivets. We have the paddles, and we have extra plane links. So. I guess we just got to do this yeah. one paddle at a time. Nothing to about to do it. It's a lot of breaking chain and re replacing chain, but yeah. somebody's got to do it. So hopefully this will be the last time we have. To do hopefully this will be the last time, and that well, but except for when we have to put on the new sprocket if we, if find, we one. find one. If we find one, <laughs> yeah. So if anybody has a top sprocket for one of these old smoker elevators let me know in the comments below we desperately need one okay we decided that it would be easiest to do all of this instead of breaking the chain i think we calculated at least 64 times um we broke it twice and we pulled the entire oh has i tripped right there pulled the entire chain out and we got it laying on the ground um, that'll be make it easier to break the chain. It'll make it be easier to rivet. We won't have to use the ratchet strap to tension it each time we want to break the chain. Um, so that's what we did. And now Chris is going about starting to break it. We're going to pull out the old paddles. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ooh, I got a fly in my throat or something. Frog in my throat. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the riveting. So it's going to be a lot of repetitive stuff, but you guys have seen us break this a million times before. So um, that's what we're gonna do, and we'll check back in later. All right, guys, we just riveted the first two steel rivets onto the chain. Um, it's looking good. It allows for a little bit of movement left and right. Chris is cruising along, breaking chain and putting in the new tabs, and I'm gonna follow behind with the rivet gun and the rivets. So. Here we go. Talk to me. How are we gonna get this back on the conveyor? I have no idea, but we'll <laughs> figure that out. Um, okay guys, we just replaced all of the paddles and they have these nice quarter inch zinc coated steel rivets. Hopefully that's what the YouTube viewership would have used as well. We decided not to use the aluminum ones because steel 
is stronger than aluminum. We also just counted at the last part of the time lapse there. That's why Chris and I were going opposite. We counted the links because while we have it off the conveyor, it's easier to do that. Sammy is kvetching. But we got 347 links the on each side. Us. Both of us, yeah. I finished like slightly before Chris. Looked at him and he said 347 and I said yes. <laughs> Thank God. Um, we only were, had to replace one bad link. It was like a normal bad link. Mm -hmm. So now every paddle has a brand new mounting link on it. And if you guys have been following along, that was the issue that we were encountering. The regular links weren't breaking. No, they were fine more or less, but yeah. the ones that we welded seemed were the to issue. be the issue. Right. So now all of the welded pieces on this chain are gone. Correct. Everything is drilled and riveted. Drilled and riveted. And I'm told that's how these things like came way back when, you know, from the factory. Uh, so now to address your question of how we're going to get this thing back on, I think the best way would be to start at the top because the top is the only drive sprocket. Mm -hmm. Put a rope along the first paddle to give tension, set it on those sprockets, and I'll run it in reverse and we'll get it all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Okay. I think. I don't know. Might be the easiest if you guys have any input, I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments, but by then, it's going to be way too late. So, watch thanks. Watch the struggle. Yeah, watch the struggle. We'll, we'll figure it out. And, oh, Chris said while we were doing that, oh, I'm sure we're going to get, my knees are barking right now. Yeah. We, we said we're bet we're, we were going to get a bunch of flack in the comments for, oh, you should have been doing this on the bench or something. Well, I've been taking your guys, the viewers' advice lately and dousing this chain in used motor oil. 15W40, Shell Rotella, only the best. So this chain is filthy. I mean, it, no, I'm way too OCD to bring a diesel oil cover chain into the garage. And plus, we don't have enough room. If I had a big pole barn or something, maybe, but we couldn't even stretch it out and it needed to be stretched out. I gotta keep moving, my knees are hurting. So <laughs> let's, let's get this thing, try and get it back on the conveyor. All right, guys, that went pretty well. We got the conveyor chain on and the it's all linked up. Uh, so like the, all the bars are even. And now we have the two attachment points here on the bottom side of the conveyor. So I'll try and set you up to see some of this. How did we get when we broke the chain the last time, how did we get this to the top side? Remember we... Well, wait, can't we just keep running it in reverse? So that this, and then pull this manually up and over, and then it'll just go? Yes, that's what we did last time. Desk pop. Desk pop.
Well, all right, guys. We just got everything back together, chained back together. It seemed to, I don't know if we recorded the whole sprocket debacle, but it seemed to kind of correct itself. So we're gonna fire it up and see how it does. Okay, so, I mean, obviously that was a dry run, very dry. I, we definitely need to oil the chain after it's been sitting in all those asphalt millings. It's pretty oh, yeah. dirty. That could potentially maybe have something to do with why it's kind of bouncing around. Um, it definitely started to work better when it was lubed up. But the bottom sprockets here, guys, uh, adjusted itself, if you remember way back when, that one is a floating sprocket, floating as in left to right. Um, there is a keyway in there with a key. Um, we let it float just to kind of adjust itself. And the top sprockets seem to be doing their thing. We noticed that the chain on the bottom as it's going around is kind of hopping around a bit, but it's always kind of done that. So, um, can't really say that that's out of the norm. Uh, I guess really the only way to find out is to split some wood onto it, right? Yeah. Um, so that'll probably be another video. I don't know. We got a full dump trailer of, of wood over here. Um, but for now, I'd call this a success. So far. So we will try and get some, some splitting action with this maybe for the end of, end of this video. I don't know, this could be the end. You guys know what to do. If this is the end of the video, I, I'll cut this out, but if it's not, hit all those buttons, give us a big thumbs up, click the subscribe button down below. Uh, questions, comments, or feedback, put it in that comment section. This thing has been a true saga, yeah. but I think we're working out the kinks. Hopefully these rivets work out for us and uh we'll catch you on the next one for now i'm jake and i'm chris this is dude ranch diy thanks so much for watching we'll see you here next time yeah we'll see you here next time <laughs>